Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films, and welcome back to UEFN or Fortnite Creative 2.0. Now, in this video right here, we're going to be talking about World Partition. Now, World Partition is a system that was introduced in Unreal Engine 5. It's honestly one of the best features that they actually introduced in Unreal Engine 5. So with that being said, let's get started. I just loaded up a template map right here. I think it's called Tortilla or Fortilla. And right now, in this map, we have World Partition turned off so i push the changes and i open up the fortnite creative uh, actual fortnite game as you can see right here and let's make that a little bit bigger so you can see better now world partition is pretty cool but it is critical in unreal engine for fortnite or fortnite creative 2.0 because as you all know the fortnite creative 2.0 has this 100,000 units limit as far as your memory goes you can go higher than that but i don't think it can publish it publicly if you go over so that being said you can look at that meter up there you're seeing that so you can see we're using 49,173 units and if i move away from our island here which is our main island i'm uh, flying at 10 times speed right here you're gonna see that our memory usage pretty much stays the same and that's because we don't have world partition on now if you're making a small level or a small map you don't necessarily need world partition, but if you're trying to create a massive environment in Fortnite Creative 2.0, you might want to turn on streaming or world partition. So we'll go back to our UEFN right now, and to turn on world partition is so simple in UEFN. It's not even funny. We don't have to enable any plugins or anything like that like you would in Unreal Engine 5. All you have to do is go to the world settings, and if you don't see world settings, just go to Windows, and go to world settings right here so make sure it is turned on and in the world settings you're going to see this option called enable streaming this is how you enable world partition and i was going to say yes and it's going to ask you if you want to read the documentation we'll just say no and that's pretty much how it goes now if i push the changes here and save the selected all right so here we go it's still preparing so we'll wait for it a couple of seconds all right so our session is connecting now and now we are here we're back we're good to go it's going to respawn us. It's going to drop me in my map right here. And again, we're going to fly out. And as you can see, it's loading the memory usage again. We're going to wait for a couple of seconds. It should be the same exact thing. It's just 40 some thousand, right? So 49,174. But now if I move away from my island, you're going to start to see that my memory usage is decreasing. That's because with world partition turned on, the memory usage is actually updating around our player character so again if i move closer to this so that means closer we get to the island the more memory we're going to use but if we back off we're not going to be using as much because everything is going to start to disappear so with that being said what i'm going to show you is how you can control some of that change as far as the transition from here to that right so we'll go back to our editor right now and in the world settings again if you turn on preview grids it's going to show you the world partition grid view so basically whatever is inside these squares are going to be what's being unloaded and loaded into your scene and you can increase or decrease that cell size if you want by just going here and decreasing it or increasing it so as you notice that if i move back stuff starts to disappear that's because right now they're actually separated into these different cells okay so say you want the entire island to just disappear all at once you don't want it to gradually disappear all you have to do then is just increase your cell size to actually capture your entire island like so and again it goes by player position so as you can see as i move you're going to see that the circle around there which is the loading level is going to move with me so now we have this entire level in just one cell so i'm going to push the changes save selected and we're going to wait for that to take effect here dropping down okay i just fell out it's fine so let's fly and now if i back out You're going to see that our island is staying in there, but watch when we get further, the entire island is now going to disappear because we set the cell size to be as big as the island. And again, depending on your project, totally up to you on how you want that to be separated as far as appearing and disappearing. And again, one of the cool things about World Partition is that now you don't have a 100,000 units limit 
on your island. Because if you have a big map, say you want to create something over here, I only have 244, so I can start dropping things here as well. And you're not going to be stuck with just 100,000 in your entire map. And that is honestly one of the benefits of using World Partition. Now, additionally, with World Partition turned on, now it's not necessarily in here now, but I'm going to show you what it will look like. If I go to Windows right here, there should be a World Partition viewer or outliner or editor. It's not here yet, but I'm pretty sure if they have World Partition here, that it's going to make it here. But with that being said, what I'll do is I'll go to Unreal. Unreal Engine 5 and show you what it looks like. So here we are in the regular Unreal Engine 5 editor, and this project is the Matrix demo, and it has World Partition turned on. Now, if I go to Windows, World Partition, and I can go to the World Partition editor now, this right here should be making it to UEFN as well. It would only make sense. And what this is going to do again is show you your grids, right? And again, what's cool about World Partition is I can actually just select the areas that I want to load in. Right here, I'm going to go and load this region right here, and that's going to load it up. And now if I go over there, you're going to see that we have this region that was not there before. And again, I'm going to unload this region, and it's going to disappear. Now, that is very, very helpful. Again, because as you can see, this entire map is huge. If I were to unload all of these cells right here, it will probably crash my computer or my laptop. But with World Partition, I can enable those cells. Say if I have to work right here, and you know, maybe you will add something here. I'll load the section here, and I will just add. So if I go right here, say I wanna add this thing, I wanna change it up. I don't have to have my entire city loaded. I can just choose the areas that I want, save it, and that's gonna take effect. But once I press play, again, that world partition example that I did in UEFN is gonna take effect. It's gonna load it based on your character's position. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. That is how you use World Partition in Unreal Engine for Fortnite. Additionally, Fortnite Creative 2.0. If y'all learned something new today, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Additionally, I have an entire Fortnite Creative 2.0 playlist that you can check out. I'll put the link in the description below. Until then, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out. If you haven't done so, go ahead and check out my Unreal Engine 5 courses on ArtStation, Udemy, or Gumroad. Additionally, I have consulting service now, so hit me up if you have any questions or need help in your Unreal Engine 5 projects.